It's Wes, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna to show you how to get the most out of your Fuji X100V for video, slow motion video capabilities. This camera is known for being a street photography gym, but it's 1080p slow motion can be a powerful tool in your tool bag. For documenting streets, your travels, or anything you might wanna showcase in slow motion. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. I love the Fuji X100V, and my only regret is not trying out the 120 frames per second feature on it earlier. Recently, I went out to Venice in Los Angeles to see the canals, visit Venice Beach, and I decided I would use slow motion video to help document that outing. I'll be sharing three short edits and reviewing the steps to get the best results when shooting video with the X100V. Let's take a look at the first clip. Roll it! Roll it! I was happy with the result. I filmed in the film simulation Eterna. I did some minor color adjustments, mostly to darken the footage, providing more contrast. I also added a little sharpening, but that's it. I shot in 1080p, but up res to 4K to upload to YouTube. So let's step back momentarily to my first experience with video on the X100V. Full transparency, I wasn't impressed the first time I used the X100V for video because of the problems it had with autofocus. I was doing a little vlogging in a talking headpiece and the focus point kept jumping, jumping to the background. Clearly the eye tracking wasn't up to par with the Fuji X-T4. So my mistake was to give up for a while. However, these two examples can be classified as user error or simply not using the camera properly for what it's best made for. I found that the focus tracking when filming slow motion works pretty well pretty naturally and pretty pleasing. So make sure you test it out. Another factor is that my subjects when filming in Venice were further away from the lens. You know, it's street photography, so the camera had an easier time accommodating the focal point and providing a stable depth of field. Let's dive into the how-to steps before we see clip number two. There are two basic ways to do this, either six button pushes or three button pushes, which you can do by enabling a shortcut. I'll show you the long way, but you know, of course I prefer, for efficiency's sake, the short way. Here's the long way. Push the menu button, toggle down to the movie setting menu, toggle right and down to full HD high speed recording. Toggle right again and you'll see it's set to off. Toggle down once to highlight two times 59.94. Here's a little tip. If you depress the shutter button all the way, you leave the menu and start recording in slow motion in one step. Or you can press the menu to accept the changes or to press the joystick to accept the changes, then half press the shutter button to return to live view shooting via the back screen. Just hit the shutter button to start recording. All right, there's an even shorter way and I'd argue a better way. Set up a shortcut so that one button push brings up the full HD high speed recording menu, toggle down once, then hit the shutter button to start recording. I can show you how to set up the custom button uh, settings, but that's really another video. It's actually one I, I probably will make, a video on how to set up shortcuts and custom buttons because I have a few customizations that I like and it can be helpful to hear what others do to customize their camera controls. Here's how to get your X100V into slow motion mode. I set a shortcut. I use the function one button, the F1 button on the top right, right next to exposure compensation dial as a custom setting to bring up the slow motion menu. It's gonna say off. So if you simply toggle up or down, you get to your options. If you toggle down, you'll see 59.94 times two, 120 frames per second. If you toggle up, you'll see 23.98 times five, 120 frames per second. So the X100V provides two options to film in 120 frames per second. <laughs> Which do you choose? I chose 59.94 times two for my experiment out in Venice, but I did some research to uncover the differences. The difference, as far as I can see, is the playback speed on the camera. If you film in 
0.94 times two, you get a playback in 60 frames per second. If you film in 23.98 times five, you'll play back in 120 frames per second. After importing the footage, the Final Cut, Premiere, or whatever you're using on your laptop or computer, you'll, your footage will be able to be played at 120 frames per second. I found the footage I filmed in 59.94 showed up in my timeline as 60 frames per second, and by highlighting the footage and selecting automatic speed from my clip retiming options menu, then the footage adjusted to 120 frames per second. I couldn't find any other differences in terms of bitrate or anything like that that would make a qualitative difference. So with that being the case, I'd recommend filming in 59.94 times two. That way, so if you need to replay anything while you're out on the back of your camera, it's a little quicker to get through that footage, to scrub through it. If you know of any other differences between these two options, let me know in the comments. I would be happy to learn more. Now, there are other options like 100 frames per second, for example, but I don't have a particular reason to highlight at those at this point. Just know they're there. Honestly, you can film at 120 frames per second and retime the footage to playback at 100 frames per second and you'll accomplish the same thing. If you know another reason why you might choose 100 over 120 frames per second, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to learn more. There's just one more point to cover and that's your camera settings which are critical to getting properly exposed footage. Let's take a look at one last clip before we touch on those. Roll it, roll it, roll it! I did it! I'm gonna share my settings, which I use when I'm filming in manual mode to get the best footage. First, your frame rate is at 120 frames per second, so I double my shutter speed, technically to one over 240, but the closest camera setting is one over 250. So that's where I set my shutter speed. Your shutter speed at one over 250 honestly helps you in bright environments like outside. We'll talk more about this later, but if you're filming indoors or in dim light, you'll need to bump up your ISO to brighten up that footage. But here we are, focusing on my outdoor settings for the filming I did when I was in Venice. Next, I use my ISO to adjust brightness, which in the middle of the day outside may need to be brought down to a pretty low setting. You can use your aperture, taking it to a setting like F8 or F16 to cut the light, but I like the F2 look, particularly if I can introduce any foreground into my shots or if my subject is close and I can get some nice blurry background to help the subject stand out. So I usually bring my ISO all the way down and then I have my aperture as low as possible. You can invest in an ND filter as well to help allow you to open up that aperture and keep the ISO low outside or in bright light, but I'm not there yet. I think I'll eventually get an ND filter, but for now, just know that all this footage was shot without an ND filter, keeping the shutter speed at double the frame rate. Again, the footage you're seeing here was filmed in 1080p in a turn of film simulation and up res to 4K. Pretty straightforward, and not a whole lot of color adjustments made in post. It's got a great look to it. I'm planning to use the Fuji X100V in slow motion for a product video to really test the slow motion out in the studio. So keep your eye open for that. I hope this video has been helpful to you or entertaining, and I appreciate a like. Drop me a like, better yet, drop me a comment. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, and uh, that's it. Roll it! I just like saying that like somebody's gonna roll something. That's it. Pablo, thanks for your help making the video. Check out Buenos Dias imagery. He's got some, do you have a video coming out on Venice? T Thursday. By the time you see this, Pablo's video will already be out. Go check out his channel and see his samples. What's your video on? Pablo will be showcasing the 28 to 70 RF lens out in Venice. So check out that channel. That's it, peace. Love you. Rolling! Rolling! I did it! <laughs> yeah. Are you? We are. <laughs>